Hey guys, it's the Delphinator here, and this is the Adjo Chair Recap Series Week 13, guys. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so what happened? Well, Gaia is not having the best time of her life right now. She's legit always fighting with the king. Um, the straw that broke the camel's back, sorry, the king's back, was when um, she eventually strong-armed him into having sexy time with her. She arrives at the king's chambers with um, fruits and stuff. Things are going really well. They start to make out. And then she goes, oh, please, I need you to stand up. And then he stands. He starts to take, take off um, his clothes, his neck pieces. And then she props her right leg on the in quotes, coffee table, and proceeds to start some sort of position that the king had never seen in his life before. Obviously, he's like, what are you doing? And she's like, um, I heard that this is the right position when you are trying to conceive a male child. Wow. So that was her um, agenda all the while. Of course, the king was upset. Like, why would you order me around? I am your king. <laughs> I'm sure back in the day, the women didn't have any say in how the sex positions or whatever um, were during sexy time. They couldn't pick. But yeah, that happened. It was pretty funny. And then he just ordered her out. Like, no, you can't be, you can't be ordering me around. I am your king, you know. <laughs> it's funny. Meanwhile, Ali Chenu, our special boy, Ashes, was attacked. I don't know if you guys remember Bolum. Bolum is the general's right-hand man. Bolum struck Ali Chenu with a massive twig on his head. Um, he started bleeding. He went unconscious. And then he dumps him in a river to drown. But thankfully, he and Elaka Che, they have this thing where they meet up at some point every day. And I think she was coming to meet him and realized that he was face down in the river unconscious. So she screams, runs away to find help. While she's running, she runs into Akajo. Akajo follows her and pulls him out of the river. And then he comes to, but he doesn't realize what happened. Um, Akajo, obviously, who Sabi small, knew that um, like this boy's life is in danger. So he went to report to the king. The king confronts the general, yada, yada, yada. He denies it, obviously, and moving on. More on Ali Chenu. Epe obviously is still upset that Ali Chenu seems to always be ahead of him in everything, including being liked by Lakeche. So remember from the previous week, he went into the um, forest to get the, to find the mad roots and injured his heel in the process. Anyway, he did find the mad roots and he invites um, Eje and Ali Chenu to the <laughs> village pub to have a drink. Obviously, Ali Chenu does not drink, but they somehow convince him to drink. So while they're at the village pub, Epe spikes Ali Chenu's drink with a portion of the mad roots. I don't know, he, maybe he ground it or something. And yeah, it didn't turn out well for him. So they leave the pub, and next thing, Ali Chenu starts to display. He's scratching his ears. He, he's not speaking. You know how mad people behave in Nollywood movies? Yeah, he starts to, to do all of that. Then um, Epe tells Eje to leave to call their parents. And then um, Elekache shows up all hysterical. She grabs him, pulls him into an embrace, and then she starts to sing soothing songs to him. And then he seems to be getting calm or something. Do not forget that Elekache is an aqua, a priestess. She's not supposed to be touching man. Man is not supposed to be touching her. Like I said last week, but she's hugging man in the middle of the village. People now gather around. Mother, father, um, villagers, and they're just looking like, hey, ow, what's a taboo? So I really don't know what's going to happen next after that. Are their heads going to roll? I guess not. But let's see how the whole thing plays out. Meanwhile, back in the village, all Fu is just sitting on her bed, seething. She's always angry over one thing or the other, and then she's... She's worried, basically, because she has found out that Obey's husband, that's the guy played by Basi, now knows that she's from Abo. So she's wondering that this man is not to be trusted. He's probably going to run his mouth somewhere. Anyway, Obey shows up and they start yelling at each other. Um, Ofu confronts her. Why would you tell your husband where I'm from? Blah, 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 blah. 
the husband is not to be trusted. And then she reveals to her that she's the one who gave um, Basi the herbs that she used to jazz Omwe. She didn't think that he would use it on her, on, on her friend. But hey, that's what happened. Obviously, um, Obe is just hearing this for the first time. She's pretty shocked. She's annoyed. So the tables flip and she starts to yell as often, how could you do this to me? Blah, blah, blah. And the awful reassures her that I'm your friend. I'm the only one you can trust in this village. Yada, yada, yada. She shall calms her down and, and, in fact, gives her the herbs that Basi used on her and says, this is what he used on you. You can use it on him to control him as well. Obe is still stunned and she walks out of the hut. I really don't know what she's going to do with the potion or the jazz that she got from Orphan, but I doubt that she's ever going to trust Orphan the same way she has trusted her all this while. So let's see how that plays out as well. I think from this previous week, I'm more interested in this whole Alichenu madness, temporary madness story. I want to see how that plays out. I want to see the king's reaction. Um, I want Orphan to finally give birth to this male child. Let us hear what. What else? Let's see what happens this week. I don't know if you're watching, but if you haven't jumped on the Aja Chair train yet, you are sleeping on a bicycle. Really jump on it. Jump, jump, jump on the train. Choo, choo. Once again, it's the Delphinator here. Do not forget to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, and share this video. Until the next one, toodles.